What a star! Day circle musical note. Scoffing at danger, my brave explorers entered the cave. Will they actually find the Pirate King's treasure? I tremble with anticipation. Welcome back to Water Park Rangers. Let's play Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. In the last episode, we solved the secret of Skull Rock, and in this episode, we're plunging into yet another dungeon. The um, you know, I actually just forgot the name that they just showed us. Pirate's Grotto. That's what this place is called. Anyway, we're starting things off with a brand new enemy here, which really isn't that new. Um, you should already know how to deal with these things by now. They're just like the blue fire from before, but red. Like, I honestly don't know what else is different about them. I think they even have, like, the same amount of HP and attack and everything. It's just they have a different color. Uh, which is weird, because there's, like, both kinds in this dungeon. Anyway, yeah, they're not a threat, really. Not to me, anyway. Because I'm so damn good at this game. <laughs> There we go. Staples. That was easy. Plus, we leveled up. Pretty sweet. Level ups in this game are so much fun. I mentioned it before, but th this is probably like one of my favorite games to level up in. So let's see. HP, FP, BP. Yes, BP. Because we're mostly sticking with that. Though I gotta say, there was um, a friend of mine who I finally got to play Paper Mario Thousand Year Door all the way through recently. Like, we did an exchange. I'd never played the first Paper Mario, so he made me play that. And, um, after I, after I did that, like, he played through Thousand Year Door. And when he did, he was mostly using BP2, and I've kind of realized, like, um, exactly how much harder this game is when you're not using BP, as a matter of fact. Like, using a little bit of HP and FP plus a ton of BP is the surefire way to go. Anyway, we could always jump that gap, but, eh, why, when we have the star piece. And believe it or not, you actually can't get any further in that direction yet. That platform is too high. So, now it's just a matter of getting across this little gap here. And that's easily done with Trogdor. You could totally use Vivian's um, Veil ability, but that would just take way longer. So, there we go. I like it when they give you options on how to solve puzzles. Oh crap, I hate these things! Bullet Bills! Um, these are so annoying. They're just going to be spawned, like they're, sho they're shooting from the other side of the screen constantly until you destroy their source. Um, they're really annoying because even though they're very weak, they tend to get the first strike in on you, plus they just do an annoying amount of damage for how weak they are. And they give you, like, no star points. Ugh, oh well. And, um, an efficient way I find to get past them is to use Vivian's Veil. So you can hide right like that, then run up and smack them! When you smack one of the cannons, um, they're called Bullet Bill Blasters. Then you, then you engage in battle with both of them, so you only have to fight one in order to fight both. Kind of a unique exception in this case to other enemies. Anyway, um, they're pretty hardy. They got a lot of defense, so it's up to you how you want to decide to defeat them. I think one perfectly viable strategy is to go for Yoshi's Gulp. Oh my god, I'm so mad that Bobri's turn got wasted um, before the mist came in, because he could have blown away the fog, but now... We had to miss. This is why I hate mist so much. Ugh, fog's so annoying. Anyway, what bullet bill blasters do in battle, quite obviously, is shoot out bullet bills at you, which are then going to attack on their turn. So, I'm going to see if I can wipe them out. And unfortunately, I missed one of the, bull bl one of the bullet bills in the mist. I missed it in the mist. And I missed it again. Damn it. That's a problem with mist. You know, I have to call it fog, because otherwise it's just going to make a bunch of inevitable mist puns. <laughs> And anyway, we're gonna kill this guy just so he can't damage us. And Koops, of course, fell on his side, so he's being useless. Please get up, Koops! Oh, great, Koops! At least you're invisible! Um, I mean, I guess that's cool, but now the Bullet Bill still has a chance to attack Mario! You little selfish prick! Oh, at least he missed. And also, I can say missed now that the mist is gone, and it's not a pun. I really have to call that shit fog. <laughs> Oh well, planning ahead for the next time that we come across fog. Fog makes you miss. Ugh. Like, I guess I'm alright with puns, but when they literally get in the way of saying something, they are so annoying, I can't even- I can't even begin to- Dude, I can't even get- I can't even talk, that's what I can't do! I'm so frothing with anger at the fact that fog and mist are the same thing, and yet can also mean to miss something. Ugh. It's ridiculous. Damn you, English! See, this is the reason that I habla espanol. Todos los días. <laughs> I actually do know a little bit of Spanish. You just saw the full extent of my Spanish knowledge. <laughs> oh, so there's a winch here that raises the sluice gate. 
You need a handle to move the winch. Okay. We'll do that, but we will have to wait for a long time to solve that puzzle, quite obviously. If that wasn't clear already. Anyway, new enemies here. Giant pink bombs. Um, while well, that fog did nothing. Anyway, they seem to have a good amount of defense, but you do want to really kill them quickly. Because what they'll do is they're going to raise their defense, raise their offense, and then explode. And that makes them hard to kill before they explode, and they do more damage when they explode. Also, rule of thumb, never attack them with Bobbery because he's a bomb and his attacks are explosive, so they'll set those pink bombs off instantly. Which is bad, yeah. Anyway, that's the deal with them. So in this room here, we've got... Oh, just another one of you. Well, that was nothing special. <laughs> but at least you have a save block, so that's pretty nice. This dungeon's, like, moderately sized. It's okay. And it's not that great of a pirate level, I have to admit. Like, I like pirates, but... I'm not a huge fan of this chapter, all things considered. It's some people's favorite, and I'm okay with that, because, you know... Who am I to blame if people like something with pirates the best? You know, that would be, like, hypocritical for me. But that being said, you know, I feel like there was a lot of potential with it that didn't get as realized as it could have. Maybe it's because... Just a cave with stuff that used to be pirate shit isn't as awesome as actual in-use pirate ships. That being said, um, I've actually played a little bit of Super Mario RPG recently. I've been um, co-playing through it with um, someone else here at college. And actually, there's a pirate level in it too. And we had a ton of fun on that pirate level. It was a lot of fun. Um, there was like this password and everything. You went inside a sunken ship. And it was a really cool level, all things considered. Um, I'm just not that big of a fan of this one. Like, this is a pretty average Paper Mario Thousand Year Door chapter to me. Like, this chapter is pretty much like the the middle of the middle of the road. Like, it's better than Chapter One. It's obviously better than Chapter Two, but I don't know if it's better than Four or any of the others really. Like, it's it's pretty much right in the middle. <laughs> anyway, this is a good time to eat our little whatever that thing was, honey shroom, and we're gonna need a key in order to get through that locked door. But there's a shine sprite here that's kind of bothering me, so how are we going to get it? Well, you hit an invisible block there using coops or whatever you prefer to find it with, and bam! Shine sprite get. And uh, we have that, we're going to continue on our merry way. Of course, there's a metal sheet there blocking the way, so how the heck can we hit that switch? Well, it should be pretty apparent. You just go for Bobbery. And like you did with the boom boss boom puzzle, the skull rock, activate the switch. By the way, to make Bobbery explode more quickly, you can just press the button again that you used to throw him. Turn back. Oh, go no further or you will never leave. Who gives a shit? I'm going in. <laughs> Mario seriously does not give a damn. Like, I've always loved how his sprite in this game, his face is always just like so uncaring. He's just like, oh, who cares? I I'm just going to go for it. Like, he looks happy and stuff in the first Paper Mario, and in this one he's just like, nope, I don't care. I'm Mario, bitch. I do whatever I want. That's pretty much what he's, what he's like in this game. Anyway, this is kind of a weird puzzle right here. Uh, first off, you stand here, hold Koops after standing right next to the switch, and release! It'll help you move up, and that's a good chance for you to get the switch. And I was really cool, so I used Koops to get the grotto key, and now I'm going to stand here and wait for it to lift me back up to over this side so I can get the extras, which are, number one, another Shine Sprite, Tons of Shine Sprites in this chapter, if you haven't noticed, and inside this barrel, another star piece. So, man, that's how you loot this room with style. That's, uh, there's nothing else really left in it, so just head right on out. Little trivia fact about this, um, this dungeon here. It has a bunch of random lanterns and stuff hanging in it, and it's actually pretty similar to a favorite restaurant of mine back home. Um, and actually, this, I'm recording this right before going back home for Thanksgiving, so who knows, I might actually go back there. And get myself some awesome barbecue. That'd be great. Because actually, food here at college isn't so bad, but... Man, there's nothing that really compares to meals that you either cook yourself or get at places that you like. And I do both. Anyway, a bunch of these repetitive little enemies here that I'm pretty sure I didn't even really mention too much about them. So yeah, parabuzzies, um... Yeah, they just fly around and they use items on you occasionally and they get up pretty quickly. They're annoying. Suffice to say. <laughs> That's all there really is to say about them. They're really unremarkable, bland, and uncreative enemies. That's one thing that I'm not such a big fan about with, um, both the first Paper Mario and Thousand Year Door, 
is that they mostly just use enemies that you encounter in the standard Mario series. Whereas, what I think that Super Mario RPG does better is they put in the most random crap for enemies, and some of it's just completely like... What were they even thinking? But at the same time, it's nice because it keeps things fresh. And that's certainly what this game could use, you know? It'll keep things fresh. And it might sound like I'm being too harsh on it, but trust me. Like, I think this is an awesome game, that's why I'm LPing it. It's just... I think that with games that do a lot of things right, sometimes it's easier to find out by, ex by extension what they could have done better. And yeah, that's just one of those cases where they could have had more diverse enemy squads. You're gonna see later on they just bring back some recolored enemies, and you know... That's a common complaint in RPGs, that people just recolor sprites for new enemies. And it's certainly better when they don't do that. That's what I feel. Anyway, um, seems like there should be something hidden here. Yep, of course there would be. <laughs> so let's just gra that, grab that extra star piece. There we go. I actually had to cut ahead there because it was so hard for me to pull off that jump. Honestly, even after all this time, that jump is still annoying to pull off for me. Another easily earned shine sprite. Like, they're not even trying anymore. They just give you them in this chapter. There's a reason for it. You'll see. We have so many shine sprites. So you can either use Vivian's Veil if you're a dingus, or you can roll through this normally uh, using their paper tube and try and pull it off well, unlike how I did it. Because there's those little spikes that pop out right there. Oh crap! I roll right barely into it and Mario's like, Oh, I have to go all the way back! Not just barely back, all the way back! Because I'm an idiot! So just roll a little slowly. Actually, I never realized how well done those shadows are on those spikes. Check that out, man. That's quality. Attention to detail. Like, you'd think that a little obstacle like that wouldn't even bother having a shadow, but they really went through and thought things out. That's a level of detail that's really nice in this game. Like, sometimes the detail's there, and sometimes it's kind of just gone. You'll see a point where, um, there's actually, like, very little detail in the game. I'll show you it. And I never really noticed it until my friend was playing through Thousand Year Door and was like, you know, this part's really sparse, and I was like, I didn't really think of it at the time, but looking back on it, yeah, I agree. Like, it was kind of bland level design. Anyhow, um, damn it, I would- YES! I super guarded it! I was really looking forward to being able to super guard one of those, because that always looks so cool. There we go. And the last Fire Guy is not going to last very much longer. You know there's actually an enemy in the first Paper Mario, I think, that's called Fire Guy. Like, he's a shy guy who's on fire, is what I remember. They had some cool enemies in that game. And I mean, they, they've got some cool ones in this one, but unfortunately, I don't really think we've seen too many of them yet. Yeah, well, the coolest enemies aren't going to appear until really late. That's the problem. Oh, well. You just gotta deal with it. I mean, the bosses are interesting enough. So to get through here, yeah, you just use Bobbery. Nothing too remarkable about that. You just blow it, blow it up. <laughs> Another long hallway. You know what this means, folks. Get out Vivian, because it's time to dodge some bullet bills. Oh, great! It looks like there's two cannons. Well... At least this time you're going to see my preferred strategy of fighting the Bullet Bill Blaster. As I mentioned last time, Yoshi's really the, your best solution for doing it. So, let's see if I'm smart enough to actually switch out and use Yoshi. Yes I am! Trogdor, you're up! Leave it to me, Gonzalez! Gulp! And, just like that, the Bullet Bill Blasters will know more. Because it just cuts through both their defense and damages both of them. That's one thing that you need to remember about Yoshi's Gulp, I mean Trogdor's Gulp, is that it's very useful because it can hit multiple targets, but you can also just use it on a single target if you want. It's it's totally optional if you just want to hit a target while, while going through its defense. Feel free to use Trogdor, you know? It's totally up to you. This could really help in a pinch if you need to get some extra damage on a really tough enemy. Or a boss, even, you know? Actually, no, um, not a boss because there are very few bosses that Yoshi, I mean Trogdor, can actually eat. Um, I know he can eat Macho Graba, which is really strange, considering Macho Graba's huge. But, um, yeah, he can eat Macho Graba and I think also Rock Hawk. Although, besides that, he really can't eat many other bosses. Anyway, we're going to check out what's in that room next episode.